To be honest guys, I did not think I'd have to make a part 2 to the original video on Pierre Gasly. Because I assumed that Gasly would actually start to improve and get closer to his teammate Max Verstappen. But it seems as though the opposite has happened. So today I'm going to get into more reasons why Pierre Gasly absolutely should be dropped from Red Bull Racing. And in today's video, I'm going to analyse his races at his home Grand Prix at Paul Ricard and also his races at Austria, Silverstone, Hockenheim and Hungary. And look at just how poor he has been during those races. So if you want to find out for the second time why Pierre Gasly should be dropped from Red Bull Racing, then make sure to check out this video. Now again guys, this video is only going to be concentrating on the races from France up until the Hungarian Grand Prix. If you want to see what my thoughts were about Gasly's first 7 races, then make sure to check out part 1. A link to that is down below in the description. But let's get right into it and start off with his home Grand Prix in France. Now, Nigel Mansell once came out with a famous quote that at his home race, he would always be about a second a lap quicker because of the home support. Now, I don't think Nigel literally gained one second per lap, but what he was trying to say was, when you're at your home Grand Prix, you always tend to perform better because you want to impress in front of your home fans. So normally, with drivers and teams, they will perform better at their home races. But somehow, Pierre Gasly went the other way. He was worse at his home Grand Prix than actually better compared to races before in 2019. Starting off in qualifying, qualifying P9, the top 8 were on medium tyres to start the race with. The reason Gasly started on soft tyres was because simply, Pierre Gasly was too slow to start or try and qualify on medium compound tyres. And then in the Grand Prix, he just continuously fell back through the field. Again, he wasn't on the absolute correct tyres, but... He should not be racing cars like the Renault, the Alpha, even racing points at times. And on the track at the end of the Grand Prix, Pierre Gasly finished in P11. He did though finish P10 after Daniel Ricciardo had a couple penalties, but really he did not deserve to finish in the points. He was so, so bad. But maybe at his team's home race at the Red Bull Ring in Austria, he would step it up again. And he absolutely did not, as again he had another very, very poor qualifying session, qualifying miles off his teammate and finishing up at the back end of the top 10. And then in the race, once again, just like Paul Ricard, he was not racing Ferrari cars, his teammate or Mercedes cars, he was racing in the midfield with McLarens, Alphas and Renaults. And given how quick the Red Bull car is right now and how quick it was at the Austrian Grand Prix, a Red Bull car should not be racing McLarens, Alphas and Renaults. And at the end of the race in Austria, he finished in P7 behind Lando Norris in the McLaren. And things were looking horrible as he came to Silverstone, but at Silverstone came probably his best performance of 2019 so far. As in qualifying, he qualified P5 and out-qualified Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari and wasn't too far off Max Verstappen. And then in the race, he did finish in P4 and was not that far away from actually getting his first ever podium finish. The only reason, though, he did beat his teammate Max Verstappen was because, of course, Max Verstappen got took out by Sebastian Vettel. But still, a great weekend, and maybe this was the spark that Pierre Gasly needed to go on and improve and be a top contender for Red Bull Racing. Two weeks later, we came to Hockenheim, and things up until the race were looking mostly good. Gasly had good pace in the Red Bull car, and again, wasn't too far off his teammate Max Verstappen, and looked as though he might be in for a good result in the Grand Prix. As he qualified P4 after the two Ferraris had their reliability issues and he capitalised brilliantly. 
but then some of the good work he'd done that weekend all went away in the race. As in the race, he had a terrible start from P4, fell to the back after not going to intermediate tyres quick enough, and then spent the race in the midfield up until his retirement. And at no point during that race was he looking quick enough to get into P3, P4, P5. As basically he was struggling to pass drivers who were in a lot slower cars than him, such as Alexander Albon or Daniel Kvyat. And then eventually it all came to a head as he crashed into the back of Alexander Albon with a couple laps to go and retired from the Grand Prix. And that awful mistake turned Hockenheim into a mostly awful weekend. But at the final race before the summer break came, possibly Pierre's worst performance of the season so far. Because in qualifying, in a car that ended up on pole position and was looking very, very quick anyway, even if it did not end up getting pole position, he ended up almost one second slower than his team at Max Verstappen and ended up even behind the two Ferrari cars who were quite clearly that weekend slower than Red Bull, but still finished in P6 and was still looking closer to being a midfield runner than a top runner, even though he is in a top car. But the race, quite frankly, in Hungary from Pierre Gasly was pathetic. He had a terrible start, lost position to Carlos Sainz, Lando Norris and Kimi Raikkonen. He did do well to get back past Raikkonen and Norris at the pit stops, but then settled into P6 and couldn't pass Carlos Sainz. And ended up finishing in sixth behind Carlos Sainz in a midfield car. And for me, the Hungarian Grand Prix weekend was absolutely the best case for why Pierre Gasly should be dropped from Red Bull because... He was not even in a competitive fight with any of the top runners that weekend. And I repeat again, he was in a Red Bull car that was absolutely able to be on the podium. But instead ends up getting lapped by his teammate. And going forward into the final nine races after the summer break, things are not looking good at all for Pierre Gasly because... It looks as though he will absolutely be replaced at the end of 2019 and also I don't see how he will have any real good races until the end of the season. Because simply it has been confirmed by his own poor performances that he is simply not good enough. And if we now look at his comparisons to Max Verstappen when it comes to qualifying and the races since Paul Ricard... Again, it shows further evidence why Pierre should not be in the Red Bull. So first off in France, he was three quarters of a second behind Max in qualifying. Not good enough. And then was almost one lap behind in the Grand Prix. And as I said earlier, at your home race, usually you perform better than you usually do at any other racetrack. But Pierre was somehow much, much worse. Then in Austria, he was the same gap behind his teammate Max Verstappen. And one full lap behind in the race. Now, yes, I know Max Verstappen had the new front wing Austria and Pierre Gasly did not. But that new front wing around that circuit was not worth three quarters of a second per lap in qualifying or a second a lap during the Grand Prix. It was probably worth about three tenths of a second, maybe four tenths at most. So for me, that does not excuse how poor he was in Austria. But at Silverstone, again, he was good. Only three tenths behind in qualifying. That, for me, was good enough. And in the race, he did actually beat Max Verstappen. But again, it was because Sebastian Vettel took out Max Verstappen. And then qualifying in Hockenheim was not too bad, but probably could have been better in terms of speed compared to his teammate, as he was four tenths of a second behind Max in qualifying and then in the race he retired whilst Max Verstappen went on to dominantly win the Grand Prix and then in Hungary he was nine tenths of a second off his teammate who was on pole position and then a lap behind in the race and I will say this again if you are getting out qualified this many times by this bigger gap by your teammate and you're even being lapped in those certain races 
You are not doing good enough. I don't care who your teammate is. I don't care if it's Ayrton Senna or Marcus Winklehock. If you are being out-qualified by that big of a gap in qualifying and being lapped by your own teammate in the race, you are simply not doing well enough. And again, those five races right there just prove my point that I've been saying ever since the Canadian Grand Prix that Pierre should be dropped from Red Bull for 2020 at the absolute latest. And also another thing that is so poor when it comes to Gasly is that I can understand drivers having a poor start to a season. For example, Antonio Giovinazzi had a poor start to the season, but Antonio, even though in Hungary he didn't really do that well, you can see the improvement and the progression from Antonio as the season goes on. But with Pierre, when has he really made big progress consistently as the season goes on? He hasn't. Because if we go back to around Spain and Monaco, at those races, in terms of lap time, he wasn't that far off his teammate, which was, I think, definitely a much improved performance. But then we come to Canada where he's being out-qualified and out-raced by a Renault, and then follows that up by two absolutely awful races in France and Austria. And then we get to Silverstone, where you think that after that race, maybe Pierre has turned a corner. And then in Hockenheim in Hungary, he's still in the midfield. He's not making progress. These races where he is actually quite close to his teammate, those are blips. That's not what he can actually do, those are blips. What he can actually do is what he's been doing in Hungary and Hockenheim, which is be miles off his teammate and be in the midfield in a top running car. And I've said this so many times, I just don't see how anyone out there can make a case for Pierre Gasly staying at Red Bull past the end of the season. For me, he is absolutely done. And the person that I think will absolutely replace him in that team is Daniel Kvyat. Now even though the Toro Rosso car ever since the French Grand Prix hasn't been that good, Daniel has still put in some, I think, good performances, such as Silverstone coming from 17th on the grid and finishing a P9 and he could have got P8 if he had more laps in that Grand Prix. And of course at Hockenheim, he had his first podium of the season in a Toro Rosso. And got Toro Rosso's first podium in 11 years and his own first podium since 2016 where he was of course at Red Bull. And for me that performance in Germany absolutely shows why Daniel is ready to come back to Red Bull because he is a better driver than he was when he was at the team in 2015 and early 2016. Mentally he's a lot more experienced and better and I absolutely believe that Daniel would be closer to Max than Pierre would. And I think Daniel would actually be fighting amongst the Ferrari cars at certain races where, you know, the Red Bull car is doing very well, as opposed to Pierre Gasly, who cannot do that. But I just want to, guys, show you this stat between Kvyat and Gasly, because, of course, Kvyat did race for Red Bull. Now, look at this. 12 races into their Red Bull career. Look at these stats. Now, Daniel, 12 races into his Red Bull career, already had one podium finish. And after Daniel's first 12 races for Red Bull, he had 58 points as opposed to Pierre's 63 in his first 12 races for Red Bull. Now, there's three things that really do not look good on Pierre Gasly here. One... Daniel's first season at Red Bull was two races shorter in terms of the calendar compared to the 2019 calendar. So Kvyat is only five points behind in the first 12 races at Red Bull when Kvyat had two less races in his first season. Also, Daniel got a podium in a Red Bull card that was worse in comparison to the rest of the field in 2015 than the Red Bull car is in 2019. The Red Bull car in 2019 has, at worst, been the third best car. In 2015, the Red Bull car, at best, was the fourth best car. And even at times, at certain racetracks, they weren't even in the top five best cars on the grid. And Daniel, still, in the first 12 races of his Red Bull career, had a podium finish. 
And also to do with Daniel's podium this season, that means that Daniel this season in a Toro Rosso, which is not even a front running midfield car, it's about a middle of the pack midfield car. He has more podiums this season than Pierre Gasly in a top running car. How bad do you have to be from Gasly's point of view to not have a podium before Daniel Kiriat, who is in a Toro Rosso? And that Toro Rosso is, what, a second or a second and a half a lap slower than the Red Bull car? And again, all of this just makes Gasly look terrible because he is. When it comes to performing at the top of the grid, Pierre Gasly is not a top driver and will probably never be ready for that type of spotlight. As Pierre has clearly proven, he is not even in the same stratosphere as Max Verstappen. Again, I know Max Verstappen is a very, very good driver. I'm not denying that. But if you are that far off your teammate, you're doing poor. But also, there's so many drivers in the midfield that would do a better job in that Red Bull car than what Gasly has done. Such as Carlos Sainz, Lando Norris, Daniel Ricciardo, Nico Hülkenberg, Kimi Raikkonen, Daniel Kvyat, Alex Albon. Even Kevin Magnussen and possibly Roman Grosjean pace-wise would be closer to Max than Pierre has been. And because of that, I think at best Pierre will be back in Toro Rosso next season where he clearly does deserve to be. He does not deserve to be in a Red Bull car. And honestly, if Pierre is still at Red Bull in 2020, that would be the biggest surprise of the 2020 season. Because I just don't see again how anyone on this planet could justify him being at Red Bull. But let me know in the comments guys whether you think Pierre should stay at Red Bull for 2020. And what have you thought of Gasly's races since Paul Ricard up until the Hungarian Grand Prix? And I'll absolutely be happy to debate some of you who do of course disagree. But guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget again to comment down below what you thought of what I've had to say and also what you thought of this video. And also don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and also smash the like button for more content like this. And also just to let you guys know, the next video is coming in two days time and it is about Valtteri Bottas and why for me, he does deserve to stay at Mercedes. So until then guys, it has been me. As a HD, goodbye.